this computer. God bless you all. You are welcome once again. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. For those of you just joining us, we are talking about the indwelling of the word of God and how it produces a victorious life. So David says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. David also said in the book of Psalms, verse, uh, chapter 91, verse 1, that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And before we get to that, to begin to try to unpack that, let's first of all consider the that's, that I quoted, which says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, there's so many things the Bible describes the word of God as. Uh, uh, talks about, describes the word as water that washes us, describes the his word of God as the fire that consumes the works of the enemy. The Bible describes the word of God as, as, as a mirror by which you look at yourself. So whatever you see in the mirror is what you are. A mirror doesn't never lies. But in this particular verse, it says the word is a lamp. It's a lamp. Lamp unto my feet and a light unto, and then a light unto my path. Lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So the word of God lamps up or lightens up my feet, and then lights up my path. So basically saying wherever I am, no matter the circumstance I am, no matter the situation I am, the word of God is my navigating GPS system forward from there. So I don't need to be looking for anything else once, as long as I have the word of God, as long as I have the word of God, I am empowered to go to any direction, any length from where I am. So if, I, if I'm stuck in a valley, I need, all I need is the word of God. If I'm stuck in traffic, in the traffic of life, in the valley of decision, if I'm caught betwixt two things or more, the word of God can get me out. It's just a testament or a testimony to the power that's in the word. Wherever you are, that's the truth. The word can get you out. It doesn't matter which kind of valley. It doesn't matter what situation. It doesn't matter what you need, what you don't have, what you want to have. It doesn't matter if you are uh, stuck. No matter where you are, the word can get you out. It's like the four-wheel drive um, shift gear that is designed into some trucks. Because you have it, you're confident that when you're stuck in the mud, <laughs> you're going to get out. That's exactly what the word of God does. It gets you out when you are stuck in the mud. If you were told, so it's basically saying, if you were told the line of the word, you get to where you are going. The word is your navigator. It will take you to the place of, God. it will always take you to the place of God's plan for your life. So if you're trying to know God's plan for your life, look in the world. It's like your map system. Take the map, plot, plot the graph from wherever you are, from wherever, wherever you are, the word can take you to the place of God's plan and purpose for your life. One of the apps I love the most in my, on my phone out of many apps is the navigator, the GPS navigator. It takes me to anywhere that I want to go i find it in the, the the interesting thing is that the map that's downloaded into the navigator already has all the details of wherever i want to go so i don't need to look anywhere else i just punch in the address and it brings it out for me your destiny in god is in the world it's already provided for the, god's plan for your life it's right there in the word of God is in the GPS navigating system of God, which is his word. Praise the Lord. So it will get you to any destination. You don't have to worry if you don't know the way, just punch in the word. <laughs> Anybody with me? You don't have to worry if you get stuck, you miss your way. It's all right. 
just punch in the word. It doesn't matter if you are trying to find somewhere, you have three destinations to go, just punch in the information, in the information available to you in the word to take you there. Glory to God. And even if you get lost, if you miss your way, interesting thing, the beautiful thing is that it recalculates. It recalculates. So if the word of God is your navigating system, it doesn't matter then when you miss your way. I, I don't get afraid when I miss my way, when I'm following my GPS, because it always recalculates. So Missing my way is not the end of the world. Mistakes are not the end of the world. Missing the way, missing the turn is not the end of the world because the word, the word of God has enough information to recalculate, enough power, enough ability to recalculate and redirect you. And another feature I like about the navigator is the, it is not only that it recalculates, it's the fact that it does not stop recalculating uh, it'll be all right if it would have been fine if if you were, if it only just recalculates and it means that if i miss my way it recalculates but then i after three four attempts after several attempts it gives up on me but the truth is that god never gives up on you and his his gps navigating system never stops recalculating if a man with the man who first came up with the technology was as kind, as smart, as intelligent enough, as, 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 as capable enough <laughs> to design such a system and to, to, to put so much work in it to make sure you never get lost. How much God, how much more the God who made the man who made the system? to God. He never stops recalculating. So it says uh, the other scripture this, then so find, talking about how the word of God dwells in us to the point to take us to this point where we just we will never miss our way. The word of God has to have an indwelling. Just like you have to download the map from the internet into your navigating system the word must be downloaded into our spirit. Glory to God. So David says then, he that dwells in the secret place. What we need to do is just dwell in the word. We have to dwell in the word. We have to make the word of God our dwelling. We have to make the word of God a daily dwelling. He says, he that dwell in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Two key words there, dwell and abide. Dwell and abide. Dwell, the word, I looked it up in a dictionary, it is a verb, which means it's an action word. Uh, it means to live in a specific place. Glory to God. And the word abide means to act in accordance. Glory to God. And it some, of sometimes describes a feeling or a memory, which means to retain or to continue without losing the, the, the information. So you abide when the, when the memory abides, it means that it stays. Glory to God. So to dwell and to abide. He that dwells, he that lives in a specific place of the most high God shall abide, shall retain. Glory to God. Under the shadow shall be retained. Under the shadow of the almighty glory to god so and it trusts me that it says the secret place of the most high that, that's a little bit of a paradox because the is the most high board is in a secret place if you consider it the most things the the most high things naturally are normally the most visible as the word goes most high, the tallest or the most high buildings in a city is usually the most visible. Anybody with me? In the natural order, the most high things are the most visible. But with God, the order is often different. The most high things are not always the, thing, the most visible and the most obvious. He himself being the most high God, but yet 
and the invisible God. His wisdom is the most high, but the most concealed, often looking like foolishness. Glory to God. First Corinthians 1.27 says, But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Brothers and sisters, God hides the best things in the most unexpected places. God hides the best things in the most unexpected places, not in the obvious places. So if you are looking for God, for the things of God, sometimes don't, don't bother about looking in the obvious places. You might not find them. Glory to God. I remember when I used to work for my brother-in-law in the city of Jaws, we would transport money, a lot of cash from one point to the other. And um, we noticed that criminals were starting to find out and keep an eye on how you moved money. So many times he would tell us how to keep, how to transfer, how to trans transport the money. Lots of times we would, we would use a bike and we would have a, a very rough looking trash bag and we would have a, a, a disposable plate with a lead and that's where the, the, the cash is. We're talking about millions of Naira and then we would hold it. We won't be, we won't be carrying a backpack that looks like a laptop bag or traveling bag or things that make you look suspicious or that, that, that attractive to criminals. We would put it in the most uh, mundane things that people would just overlook you that this one couldn't be carrying anything. But inside that is a big treasure. God knows how to hide treasure in trash. God knows how to hide the most beautiful things in situations that look like trash. Glory to God. I don't know if anybody has ever experienced something looking like trash. I want to tell you there's treasure in the trash. Glory to God. There is treasure in the trash. I want to say that again. There is treasure in that trash. Don't underestimate the trash because there is some treasure in the trash. Where do you find gold? It's in the trash. It's in the, it's in the mud. It, you, you get it looking, it, you bring it out, and it doesn't look like anything uh, uh, that's important. But, but when you begin to refine it, when, you begin, when it goes through the furnace of affliction and goes through heat and goes through a, a, a process that begins to remove the impurities, that's when the, 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 the beauty of gold begins to be revealed. Glory to God. When you get pick up a tea bag until it goes in hot water, the, the nice things in the tea bag does not come out. Sometimes that's the process that God uses to bring us out of trash and establish our feet in the place of glory. So I, my, the word of the Lord to you is hold on. Something is about to happen. God is bringing a message out of the mess. I don't know who I'm speaking to. God is bringing something out of this. Don't give up. Don't give in. You are next in line. There is treasure in that trash. Glory to God. So it's a paradox. It's a paradox. The most high God dwelling in invisibility Not in the obvious places yet is the most high. The biggest thing in the city is the most concealed. In the natural order, the tallest buildings are the things we see first when we get in the city. But in the city of God, <laughs> it's a different order. In the kingdom of God, it's a different order. In the plan of God, it's a different order. I don't know why I didn't plan to stay this long on this part, but there is something about how God hides treasure in trash. Where the things you overlook, the things you think couldn't be working for your good, are the same things that work for your good. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord and who are called according to purpose. I have seen my mother bake cake and she put all sorts of ingredients together and none of those things I want to taste on their own. I don't want to take flour with a spoon. I don't like egg 
raw egg on its own. I don't like all the parts on the individual parts on their own, but she begins to mix them together. And somehow they begin to look different and she puts dough and mixes a little more and then takes her time and sprinkles a little more flour on the chopping board and rolls it to and fro and it begins to make sense. But it doesn't stop there. Then she takes it and puts it in the oven. And that's when the beauty of it begins. So the things that never make sense, when they get mixed together, they begin to make sense to the point that they become desirable. Perhaps God is doing something desirable in your life right now that you don't look at as desirable. What if God is just trying to make something out of the mess? Glory to God. So he hides the best things in the most unexpected places, not in the most obvious places. So it's a paradox. The most high God, he that dwells in the secret place how can how 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 do you dwell in the secret place and be the most high at the same time the difference between you and an unbeliever or a non-believing person in god is your paradigm you see god where they don't you see god and the things they don't he that dwells in the secret place, <laughs> my God. Since is the uh, and look at this. Since is the place where the Most High God dwells, makes the secret place that makes the secret place the Most High place. Because the Most High God dwells in the secret place, that makes the secret place the Most High place. So when you dwell the when you dwell where the most high dwells, you are dwelling in the most high place. When you dwell in the word of God, you are dwelling in the most high place. When you begin your day with the word of God, you are beginning from the most high place. When you set the word of God and you set God as the author and the finisher of your faith and choose his way above the ways of the world, you are choosing the most high ways. You are choosing the most you are choosing the biggest wisdom. Wow. You are choosing the highest path. You are choosing the smartest path. You choose to be led by the spirit of God. So when you are abiding in his world, you are dwelling in the most high place. The most high place. People get high on substances. Uh, people, but when you get high on the word of God, the devil can mess with you. It's the most high God. <laughs> glory to God. The difference between you and an unbeliever is the, is the dwelling of the Holy Spirit in you and the dwelling of the word of God in you. Take those two things out. You're just like anyone else. The spirit and the word of God are inseparable. The spirit and the word of God are inseparable. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said in John 6, 63, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. It is easier to explain it like this. The word of God carries the spirit of God in it. Glory to God. His spirit is in his word. It's in his word. David said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There is a relationship and similarity between actually what science refers to as DNA and what the Bible calls spirit. Uh, in my recent study, uh, going through a lot of uh, materials, books by specialists, neurologists, uh, quantum scientists, and a lot of research, I found out that there's a very, very close similarity between what the Bible calls spirit and what science calls DNA. First Corinthians 17 declares something. It says, he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. That as you are 
you know, as you are joined with the Lord, you are one spirit with him. So, in other words, I became one spirit with the Holy Spirit now that I am born again and joined with him. I have a new holy and divine nature because I am joined to him. My God. So this is uh, 1 Corinthians, Colossians 1.27 and 2 Peter 1.4 says, this is Christ in me, the hope of glory. The divine DNA from God was fused into my human spirit, causing me to become a partaker of God's divine nature as a believer in Christ. So the Holy Spirit is God's divine nature in us. The Holy Spirit is not just a voice that speaks to you. When you begin to treat him as a person, it changes your life's narrative. Because he's a person, not just a voice. He's a person and he lives in you. His voice is one thing, but not everything there is to him. His divine nature is another, and it's just as important. I was taught a lot, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is great. You cannot uh, really understand and have a relationship with God, except you listen, you know, have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and listen to the voice of the Spirit. But he's not a voice. He's a person with a voice, a personality, and he lives in me. And I must only not understand him as a voice or recognize him as a voice, because if I put him as a voice, then I'm not putting a face to the voice. I'm not putting a personality to the voice. It's not just a voice, it's a person who lives inside of me. The speaking part of me is not the only part of me. I have a personality. That even when I'm not speaking, you can still experience my personality. Glory to God. So the speaking part of him is not the only part of him. He is a divine personality. So then having a spirit is not just having an inner voice that speaks to you. It's having a resident, inherent God living inside of you and expressing himself daily through you. The Bible says that we are partakers of his divine nature. Isn't that awesome? That I am a partaker of his divine nature. That's why I have a God disposition to think. His divine nature manifests in being inclined to think, act, and see things as he does. That's a manifestation of his divine nature. Being able to, to, to think, act, and see things as he does. When that's playing out in your life, his divine nature is playing out. You are an animated expression of God because of his Holy Spirit that's dwelling inside of you. You are a carrier of his divine nature. My goodness. Something takes place when you get in the habit of dwelling and meditating on the word of God. Something is happening. It's Thank you, Jesus. You're welcome. Um, good to see you, Sister Kumbi. Something is happening. Something is taking place. As you are meditating in the word of God, it's, it's been scientifically proven that the Bible, and the Bible says it too, that as you meditate on the word, something is happening. Something is taking place. The, the, the more you meditate on the word, the more that is taking place. Something is happening. Every time you meditate on the word, something is happening. It's been scientifically proven. And I can't get into all of that. I have a lot of data on that. But it's something is happening as you're meditating on the word of God. Because the, guess what? The word of God carries the spirit of God, which is the DNA of God. So each word that God, listen to this. Each word that God has spoken is a piece of him. Every word that God has spoken, that spoke into existence is a piece of God. <laughs> well, how did God form man? Let there, let us make man in our own image. And he breathed upon him, took some breath upon him, and man will come alive. That, and that's how he created everything. 
through his word. If you read the book of John 1.1, 1, 1, you're going to find it extensively. And in the, the, the beginning, the word was with God, and the word was God. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. So the word of God is a piece of him <laughs> in my life. When I let the word of God in. When I let the word of God into my mouth, the word of God is a piece of him. <laughs> when I let the word of God into my thoughts, the word of God is a piece of him in my thoughts. Because the word of God carries the spirit of God. So each word God has spoken is a piece of him. So when I take the word into a situation that God has spoken, I am bringing God into that situation. Ha, ha, ha. When I say I shall not die but live, bringing God into a situation that is threatening my life. When I say that I will be strong, I will not be discouraged, and I would make it greater. Is it that's mean that in the world when the enemy is trying to, when the world, when the situation is trying to tell me something contrary, I am bringing God into it. Ha, ha, ha. When there's when I feel sick in my body and I'm declaring I am not dying, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. This is not going to kill me. I am going to become stronger through this. I am bringing God into it because his word, his his spirit are inseparable. And his spirit and his his word and his spirit are inseparable. Glory. So wherever the word of God is, the spirit of God is there. (laughs) My goodness. You cannot separate the spirit of God from the word of God. So each time we take a dose of his word, we are taking a dose of God. When we spend time meditating on the word of God, there is a spiritual scientific process taking place. (laughs) Glory to God. We are exposing ourselves to the, look, this is what's happening. We are exposing ourselves to the thoughts of God. And therefore, we are accepting the, those thoughts as our thoughts. We are accepting those thoughts as our reality. We are shifting our paradigm to God's paradigm. We are allowing his thoughts to shape ours. Allowing his world to shape our world. That begins to change our self-image, how we see ourselves. By meditating on the word of God, we are actually eating and digesting and letting the word go into effect in our system. Oh, Jeremiah 15, 16. Jeremiah said, I found your words and I ate them. The word of God is faith food. Feed your faith and it will grow. Starve your fears and they'll shrink. The word of God is faithful. Jeremiah said, I found your words and I ate them. He takes the word of God as his daily food, as his daily bread. He can't go a day without it. Many of us go several days without the word. We are in the spirit. We are really lean and slim. But in the things of the fresh flesh, we are very fat. We take a dose of the word in one week, but we eat three, four snacks in between meals. And then we wonder why the word is not producing how how the word is not becoming flesh in us but that bible talks about jesus the word become became flesh and dwells amongst us that's the same process that is happening in our spiritual growth the word becoming flesh the word the word expressing itself through us so the word is spirit listen to this it needs a mind to interpret it and process it a mouth to trigger it and a body to execute it and express it. The word is spirit. It needs a mind to interpret and process it, a mouth to trigger it, because we speak things into life, we speak into existence. That's how God triggered the world, through the word of his mouth. The word of God came from God's mouth, not from God's pen and and paper, through the prophets. It came from God's mouth, pen and paper, but it has a destination. It is to get in your mouth. So the paper that we call the Bible, that is written in the paper, 
That's not the, it's not active until it gets to our mouth. Our mouth is the destination of why it was written. It was written so it can be spoken. It was spoken before it was written and it was written so it can be spoken. So the writing, the text is just the transitive, the transient ver version of the word. It is the word on its way to your mouth, it's the word on its way to your heart, and it's word on its way to your life. It doesn't work on the pages of the Bible. It works in your mouth, it works in your heart, it works in your life. So the, the written word, the logos, is a transient ver version of God that's on its way to your mouth, on its way to your heart, on its way to your spirit, man. So when I'm meditating on the word, I am visualizing myself through his word. Visualizing myself through his word when I'm meditating on it. Visualizing myself. Oh, he says I'm the head and not the tail. He says be anxious for nothing. Oh, wow. In everything, make your supplications known to God. So no matter when, when I, when I, no matter what comes my way today, in case anything comes my way, I'm already prepared. I'm not going to be anxious. So I hear the report. That report I'm expecting in the mail concerning my health. Oh, I already know I'm not going to be anxious. I'm seeing myself not anxious even when the doctor's report comes. That's me visualizing myself. Through the word of God. So I'm not just speaking the words. I'm making an imprint of his spirit into my spirit. the meditation process takes place. Something is happening. In fact, all the cells of your body is responding immediately. If you understand something about genetics, DNA, neuroscience, and all of that, that's what every one of them is saying right now. That, look, the cells of your body respond to the words that you speak. So when you say, I'm weak, everybody is saying, okay, let's get ready to be weak. He says, we're weak, we're weak, we're weak, we're weak. But when you say, I'm strong, all of the cells in your body, they are responding because thoughts generate chemicals. And those chemicals are, the, it sends chemical messages to our cells, the cells of our body. So these scientists are basically explaining what God already said, the power of life and death rests in the tongue. And they that love it shall enjoy it, shall reap the benefit thereof. So even if you don't know the sciences, just well, obey the word. It, it's not more than, you don't have to study all the neuroscience. Obey the word of God. Because it's no more than me not knowing what happens in the engine of a car. I don't know combustion. I don't know hydraulics. I don't know what happens in the valves and pistons. But I know when I turn the key, it starts. When I shift the gear, I can drive it. I don't have to know the science that's going on in the engine. I don't have to know the science that's going on in the engine of a plane. I can fly an aircraft without, on the, without the knowledge of, 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 of aeronautical engineering. It's not the science we need. It's the word of God. Really. It's the word of God. So when I'm meditating on the word, I'm visualizing myself. You know, I'm not just speaking. I'm imprinting God into my life. When I'm meditating on the word, I'm communing with the spirit. I need to finish this quickly. It's like conjugation which is this, the dictionary describes as becoming temporarily united in order to exchange genetic material. In an actual sense, it's not temporary when it comes to us. It's a way of life. So I'm taking God's word, applying them into my life daily. And as I'm doing that, I am becoming more like God, seeing myself in a, new, in a different way, in a different light, becoming one with God. You, Jesus. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Spirit in terms of identity and description. Life in terms of function that they perform. So they are life-giving spirits. Words, the word of God that God has spoken to us, they are life-giving spirits. So, the head and not the tail is a spirit. will go with me wherever I go. I shall not, I shall not die, but live as a spirit. There shall be nothing impossible to him that believes. It's a spirit. 
Greater than he is he that is in me than he that's in the world. He's a spirit. So since Jesus said the words that he spoke, he speaks to us, they are spirit. So if I put that spirit in my spirit, I'm one with God. I am high <laughs> because I belong to the most high God. I'm not high on substances. I'm high on, on, on the word. Word of God contains the life of God. The word of God dwells richly in you, then the life of God dwells richly in you. How do we let the word of God dwell richly in us? Give room to the word. Let it, that's what the Bible says. Let that word is an action word, it's, it's putting the responsibility on you. Let the word of God, the word of Christ, dwell richly in you. God is already as good as it's ever going to be. God doesn't need to improve. God doesn't get better in anything. God already is as kind as it's ever going to be. It's not going to get better. It becomes, we are the ones, we are the variables. We are the ones who need to believe him. It becomes active on your life when you believe it. The way to believe it is to keep your heart on it. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You, thou shalt meditate upon it day and night, and there shall you make shall you make your way prosperous and have good success. Some people are rich, so don't just do it. Don't just let it dwell. Let it dwell richly in you. So the question to you is, how rich are you in the Word of God? Some people are rich in the knowledge of movies and sports and everything else. We but we are not rich. We are poor in the knowledge of God. Luke 12, Jesus speaking says, and he said unto them, take heed, beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the things of abundance of the things that he possesses. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. <laughs> a man's life does not consist of the things, abundance of the things which he possesses. And then verse, it goes on, on and 21 says, but the one who lays up treasure for himself is rich towards God. And the one who does not lay up treasure for himself in God is not rich towards God. So when you are rich towards God or in the things of God, you have several ammunitions at your disposal concerning anything the enemy wants to bring your way. That's how to live a victorious life in Christ. Let the word of God dwell in you. Not just dwell in you, but dwell in you richly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I hope that blessed somebody. Thank you, Lord. I hope that blessed somebody.